Hello and welcome. Hey, it's Miss Audrey from Crossroads Evangelical Church, and with me today is Miss Jess from oh. Crossroads Evangelical Church. Yes, so welcome. So today is Palm Sunday. So think about Palm Sunday and what happened and why we celebrate that. So actually today I'm really missing you guys, all you kids here. We hand out all those palm leaves and have stuff hanging around the church for a while with palm leaves and pieces of them. And so I'm missing that. So it's at home today, maybe you're going to want to huh, make some palm leaves or find something to pretend that you're having a traditional triumphal entry, maybe. I don't know. But anyways, it's Palm Sunday. And we want to think about the people in Bible times and their desire to see Jesus, to touch him. They realized if they touched him, they'd feel something special. They just wanted to be near him. So they welcomed him into the city of Jerusalem, and they yelled, and they um, were so excited to see him. But in the end, they yelled, crucify him. So Jess is going to read a Bible story for us um, out of the Bible. So let's listen. This story is out of the book of Luke. It's chapter 19, verses 28 through 36. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as a king. After Jesus said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. He came to a place called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead and went found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying this colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the crowd of, this, the crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they have seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Now we're going to read chapter 23, 33 through 43. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember, when you come, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly I tell you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. So if we think about that scripture, boys and girls, Jesus knowingly went into Jerusalem knowing that he was going to give his life. Um, and at that time, he was fully man, and he could feel and hurt and be sad, just like you and me. So... As we think about that, knowingly he went to give his life for his people, for all of us, for you, for me, for Jess, for your parents, for everyone. It doesn't matter who it is, he loves each and every one of us. He came to take our sins away. And do you, do you all understand what sin is? That would be a good thing to discuss with your kids. It, it's from as little as telling a little white lie as you took the cookie out of the cookie jar before supper time. But you told mom, nope, 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 I didn't do that. But then at supper time, you're not eating all your plateful, and she doesn't know why. Or it's big things like 
adults do, like commit a bad crime and they go to jail. But in God's eyes, a sin is a sin. And so it can be little or big, and God doesn't care. He looks at them all the same, big or little, and he loves us. That's why he sent Jesus. He bore all our sins on the cross so that we could be saved and one day go to see him. So that's the greatest thing about Easter is, and Palm Sunday, celebrating him, who he is, Mm -hmm. knowing that he came because he loved us so much, knowingly went to the cross. So um, a lot of food to think about there just maul through that and discuss it parents with your kids and help them grasp the real love of Jesus this Easter season. So here are some questions to think about after reading this story. How do you think Jesus felt leaving his disciples and friends to receive a punishment he didn't deserve? Can you think of a time when you were in a situation where you made a hard choice involving a friend or a family member that you felt you didn't that you felt you didn't get what you deserved. How about Jesus asked God to forgive those that were putting him on the cross. Jesus also could have saved himself from dying on the cross. Two pretty powerful things. What does that tell us about Jesus? So like we were just talking about, there were two criminals who were hanging on the cross beside Jesus. One criminal said mean words to Jesus, while the other said he knew he deserved to be punished for his sin. This criminal recognized that Jesus was a king, and he asked Jesus to remember him. What does this tell us about our attitudes and our actions towards others? What can we learn from the criminal that asked Jesus to remember him? And lastly, what can we learn about Jesus from the fact that he left a criminal into heaven? How much does Jesus love you? Think about what God has given to you, given to me, given to our families, given to our community. The great gift of Jesus, that's what he's done for us. He gave his life for us, for everyone. Not, he doesn't pick and choose. doesn't matter who you are, what kind of life you live. He loves each and every one of us the same. What he did on the cross was, was very hard. And it's hard for us to comprehend, like, can you imagine something that's so painful? And he bore that all, and he continued. And he could have saved himself, but he didn't. He told um, God, his Father, that let your will be done. And that's what we must do. Sometimes we don't understand when God asks us to do a few things or situations happen. We don't understand, but that's how God grows us. Like, he allows us to have some hardships and go through hard things to grow us. 
And so God dying on that cross or Jesus dying on the cross, it was a difficult time for him, but he did it out of great love for each one of us, for all mankind. So we just need to remember that Jesus loves us. He lives for us. He's always there for us. Boys and girls, let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus down to us where he unfairly took our sins upon himself, Lord, and he hung on the cross to die in our place. Thank you so much for the mercy and for the grace that you gave us and that you showed us in that moment. Lord, thank you so much that it was a gift that was undeserving and that all we have to do is accept that gift, Lord. Thank you for the love that you have for every single one of us, for every single one of these boys and girls at Crossroads and for their mommies and their daddies. We ask that you just bless our time today, that you bless our day today and that you keep us all safe. We pray this powerful prayer in your name. Amen. Amen. So what I want you to do, we're gonna do this quick craft. I just need you to grab two nails, um, any size, the larger the better, three inch to four inch maybe, if you have something like that, or even if you don't, Grab some popsicle sticks or um, maybe some, if mom makes uh, skewers, if she ever puts meat on the grill with skewers, that would even work. Um, just something like a nail, if you don't have nails, and a little piece of wire, soft like florist wire, something that's really pliable and you can bend really easy. So I'll see you after you grab those supplies. So now that you've gathered your crafts, you should have two nails or popsicle sticks, whatever you might have found, and a small piece of wire. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a small cross using those two nails and a small piece of wire to help us remind us of the weight that Jesus bore for us. And as he went to that cross, the pain he suffered, but he didn't stop. He continued to move forward and carry through with the tasks that God asked him to do. So as we create this, and then I want you to put it in a place that will remind you what God has done for us. He gave his son, and then what Jesus did for us, he died on the cross. The great love that he sacrificed that one day so that we can have peace and joy and live forever. So, okay, so what I want you to do um, you're going to have you take your two nails, and I want you to grasp them between your pointer finger and your thumb. 
making a cross something like this. And then you're going to take your small piece of wire and you might want mom and dad to help or your maybe work together. It's kind of whatever is easiest for you. And what you're going to do, you're going to wrap the you're going to wrap the small piece of wire making like an X. So you're going to go around the back and back to the front and around the back and back to the front. So if you look at it, you'll have like a piece of an X. So then what you're wanting to do, you're going to come around and go to the opposite side and pull it real tight. And then you're going to bring it down to the front and start the opposite side of your X. Okay. And try to draw it as tight as you can and do it multiple times. And then come around the back and go the opposite way one more time. So it looks like you have an X on the front of your cross, okay? And what you're going to do is bring, let that long piece end up in the back. And you're going to take the short piece and meet it over the front and move it to the back. And then you'll have two pieces on the back of your cross, the two pieces of wire. And then just take those and just twist them real tight together. OK, then you're going to have a short piece and a long piece. And if you would like, you can leave this piece on it and make it like a loop. So you can actually hang your cross somewhere. Or if you'd like, you can ask one of your parents to help you with like a little tin snips or a little pliers that has a piece where you can put the wire in between and snip it off like I did with this one. So I have one that I can lay beside my bed or I can lay it where I brush my teeth or I can put it where I eat my breakfast to remind me of what God has done for us. Or the one that I just made, I can hang. So if you want to hang it, um, something that you do every day, uh, where would you go every day? Hang it where? In the bathroom by the light switch? But don't ask mom and dad before you do it. Or hang it in the kitchen by the kitchen sink or you'll see it. Some place, I want you to place your cross that you just mailed with the two nails. The two nails represent what God did for us with his son on the cross. And then I want it to remind you of the love that he sacrificed for us that great day. We talked about how he feels pain, just like we did. But he allowed that pain and suffered through it and died and rose again so that we can come to know him as our personal Lord and Savior and live with him forever. So take that, um, place that in your heart and your heads and cherish Jesus.